Okay, so continuing along in our series here, um, this week's assignments will be from Chapter 4, Basic Object Commands. And so I'm just going to skim here to the back of the chapter. Uh, we'll have three assignments to do this week, starting with um, number two. Okay. I'm just going to fit this a little bit. And so um, it's a little more complicated, as you can see. So it's going to be... Um, well, let's just talk about it. So it's got it says, use the circle and arc commands to draw the object shown. Save the drawing as P42. And so you can draw a circle and um, you know trim it to make this outside circle or you can just draw an arc using the proper inputs and uh, obviously these are four circles but we'll need to make some drawing geometry to get them in place so this is usually a shortcoming in most AutoCAD things I'm gonna have to talk about a few tools that it hasn't really talked about yet but if you were to try to make these circles um, you're probably gonna draw you know a line straight down and then draw a line over and over. And it's kind of tough to do that when you can just do uh, commands like offset. So we'll, we'll just do it that way. And uh, you know, it'll help you to get some concepts a little better. So we'll go ahead and jump into it. <clears throat> um, this is an imperial assignment, as you can tell, because it's inches very clearly. <coughs> um, and we'll just start it. I usually like to turn on my grid snap just to pick somewhere to start um, and then I'll just turn it off. So I'm going to do 2313, turn off my grid snap and I'll do, um, well, let's just start with, I'll show you. Um, so this line, it's probably hard to tell, but we're going to draw this top line and it is equal to six across the board. And the reason you know that is because at the midpoint of this line is the dimension for the arc. And so essentially it's saying this is the center point of the arc, this is the perimeter. And so obviously if you were to do a diameter measurement of that circle, it's six. So I'm going to do a line six, six inches long. <clears throat> and uh, from it, I'm going to hit escape, turn on my line command again, and draw a line straight down. And so the point of this is I'm going to one, have an endpoint that I can make right here, which is obviously from the center down, three inches. But two, I'll already have a spot for these two circles in the middle. And so I'll just do three. And, uh, you know, so traditionally, I'm going to show you two ways. Traditionally, the way I would go about this, I would make my circle. You know, I could either click here because I already made my lines, or I could top in three. And this is a center radius circle. And so that would put it in place. And I could go and do a trim command, you know, TR to, uh, for the shortcut and hit enter twice. And that allows me to trim this off. We've got our shape, but it hasn't covered trim yet. So, um, you know, I'll show you the arc option. I'm going to be honest. I'm terrible with them. I pretty much never use them, but um, the names imply how they work, right? So like three point, <clears throat> you hover long enough, it'll pop up the picture, but essentially you're choosing three points. So technically I could probably use that one uh, just because, and when you do these, you're going to want polar on um, just because I've already got three points, you know, like I could make it fit pretty easy. You can see your center points in the right spot. Um, but a lot of these will achieve the same thing. So like start center end, you know, like when you're looking at this picture, you're choosing the first uh, part of the arc, you're choosing the center of where your circle will be and then the end. So the names are very implicit and state exactly what inputs it's looking for. So if you've got, um, something different than my T, you know, you can sift through these and pick which one will work for what you're doing. So I'll do start center end for the heck of it. So we've got start. Here's my center. Here's my end, right? Very easy. Um, it, for whatever reason, if you're drawing that and, um, it's going the wrong way, you can hold control. See what I did there? I'm just holding and letting go. Sometimes you have to move your mouse a little bit too, <clears throat> but if for whatever reason, um, it's going the wrong way. Just hold control or let go one of the two. And so now we've got our general shape. And, um, the next thing we need is to make a line across here so we can get all this fit up. And so also we need a line two inches from here to get the circles in. So although you haven't learned offset yet, you're going to use it every day. So let's just go ahead and use it here. So, um, you can click on, uh, any of these options I'll, I'll talk about like trim and extend, um, you know, there's also split and stuff down here, but 
offset is this one. You can click it there. I always just do the keyboard command. So, O, and as you see, it suggests it. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to hit enter one more time. That changes our prompt to be through. And then from here, I can click this line, move my mouse in this direction, and type in two. Okay. <clears throat> I can do O, enter again, enter, choose the line, move my mouse, two. You can also do O, two. Um, the cool part is, so like when you're using a command, you know, I hit O, uh, I choose it. It gives us prompts down here, and it tells us what we're looking for. So technically, right here, I could also choose two. And, um, you know, it's a select object. And so I could click an object and it would create it in place. So there, there's usually multiple ways to do it. Sometimes I just use through because um, you can kind of see, you know, where it's going to land. Um, so let's go ahead and we've got the line for these circles. We now need to create a line one inch from the top and one inch down from that line. So it'll be more clear what I'm doing at that point. Essentially, we, we have to have... A, uh, intersection point to know where our circles are so I'm gonna do offset enter one click it I'm gonna click I'm gonna leave my command on and I'm just gonna go ahead and click the next one and so you can do that forever as long as you don't hit escape to turn off your command you could just keep on you know doing it as long as you want so I'm just gonna select these and hit delete and so now <clears throat> we've got our crossing point for the circle the circle the circle and the circle so we can start drawing these now note these are diameter. We drew the arc and radius. So make sure if yours are too big that you're doing diameter. They do come out different. And so I will do diameter and the value is one. Okay. Now, if you are super spiffy with AutoCAD, you may be noticed that you can hit space to repeat a command. Well, for whatever reason, um, the circle command is a little goofy. If I go and draw a circle, I do one. See, it's too big. For whatever reason, um, it's it's been like this for as long as I can remember. AutoCAD repeating a circle command does the center radius instead. So if you are doing that, just be aware. But you know, you don't have to know that yet. <laughs> so uh, there is your two one inch circles, and then we need <clears throat> 0.5. Oh, you know, what? I was wrong. This one is actually 0.75. The bottom one, it's 0.75. And then this guy is 0.5. Okay, so now we can delete these little lines that we use to get these, um, you know, crosshairs to put our circles in. And then the final touch um, on the annotate tab, choose center mark. <clears throat> also, make sure you're on the center layer if you do have one, and choose all of the circles. All right. And so, um, just like that, you know, you've got the first one. So the next one here, I'll go ahead and open up the part file and then I'll take a look at it. <clears throat> the next one is number five. And so, um, you know, again, we're going to have to use some of the commands that you're not super familiar with yet, but this is a, uh, a good starter piece. So we will start with a line and what we'll do is we will make, um, the lines for the crosshair, if you will, we'll do some circles. We'll do an offset of the circle. We'll draw some lines. We'll uh, do some tan tan radius to cut that out. And then, um, we'll go from there. So I'm going to start by just choosing a random spot. Like always, Do 13 by 11 <clears throat> and uh, from one end to the other is 2.5 right so <clears throat> we'll do 2.5 and then you know there's not like a fluid way to um, make a line from the middle so there's two ways you can do it you can do from the middle up 1.25 you can select the object you can grab the endpoint and you can type in 1.25 to extend it. Um, you could also, you know, just start another line and draw down 1.25. <clears throat> but it's a little less clean when you've got multiple. So uh, you can also draw a line out in space and call it 1.25. Or actually, it should have been 
make it 2.5, select the line, hit the uh, middle grip and snap it to the middle grip there. So however you want to go about that, but we're going to make this plus line and then we'll draw our circles on the, um, the endpoints. And our circles are 0.5 for the inside diameter and then 0.5 for the outside as a radius. So we will start with the diameter ones. We'll make it 0.5. And then I'm going to go ahead and show you another cool little trick. So we'll do the radius one now of 0.5. <clears throat> and rather than drawing all of these, because it's kind of a pain, right? You can actually um, just select them, you know, using a box select. We can hit copy up here. And so it's going to say specify base point. So what it's saying is like, we're going to move it based on the point you choose. So choose the center of the circle. Uh, make sure you're on polar so you can move around. And uh, you should see, you know, it's kind of moving with you. So I'm going to click the end point of all of the lines. So just like that, you know, we've created a lot of this. <clears throat> Now we can go ahead and do the inside circle too. It's also 0.5. So we'll just go ahead and make it since it's that easy. Now from here, what we're seeking is a vertical line from the quadrants. So we'll put ortho back on and we'll just draw arbitrarily. Um, the idea is so like it's gonna end here, right? So like you could draw it to here if you want, but that's kind of um, unnecessary you can see you can actually use polar tracking to um or what they call it is it polar tracking object snap tracking so you could hover over the quadrant you could move your mouse to the right and like it'll probably pick it up as you can see like it's saying this is where you want to stop it you could do that totally fine in fact i think i might but you can also just draw from the quadrant making sure to go past that point so as long as you're just a little bit past it it's pretty quick to do that and then you can use the trim command so TR, enter, enter. And so doing that, we can just, you know, quickly chunk away that. So either way you want to draw it, you just need to, you know, make sure to get that form. And so I'm going to just quickly do these and I'll trim it out. I'm always a fan of working smarter, not harder. And so as you can see, I'm hitting escape to end the command, space to repeat the command. And then I'm just going to trim the excess using TR, enter, enter. Now, granted, with trim, you can uh, you can click the line, or you can click, and it gives you like a cutting path, and I can just position it where I want it and click again. <clears throat> so we're getting close. Um, we can go ahead and delete the crosshair in the middle, right? Try to tidy it up, make it look more like what we're trying to make. Then we can go ahead and trim the circles. Same deal, TR, enter, enter. And we'll just choose the largest circle, the inside portion. And this just leaves us with putting the fillets in. Now, technically, there is a fillet command, but um, it tends to delete some of the geometry. So what we're going to do is a tan, tan radius. So you've seen center radius. We did that to make the circles. You've seen center diameter, two point. You'll probably never use in your life. I still haven't, <laughs> but it's there. Um, you would just choose two points. But tan, 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 and tan, tan radius are a whole different piece. So I'm just going to show, like, for instance, how one works. But if I were to choose a line and a line that is 90 degrees from it and give it a value... In this case, we'll just hit enter to use the default that's showing there. Um, it creates a circle perfectly transitioning seamlessly uh, to those lines, right? Essentially, you know, these are tangent up here, even though it's on a quadrant. What's well, the same here? And so I could, you know, go through and trim out this. And as you can see, it's just perfectly smooth. And so tan, tan, tan is the same way, except for three lines. So if you had a third line, it would literally make them all you know, it would give you a smooth transition between them. So we're going to use tan, tan radius to make these. And so it requires, it'll show you this tangent point, deferred tangent. You'll choose that line. You'll choose the next line. And then it's going to ask for the value. And so ours is actually 0.25, but I'm going to top it in for the heck of it. And so I can hit the command again, but the next time it'll remember that value. So I'm going to click, click. And then you see it says 0.25. I can just either hit enter or right click. And that'll confirm it. So when you actually get pretty quick at it, it's just click, click, right click, right? And so I'm just going to click, click, right click, and then we'll trim it. Now it looks a little crazy, but, you know, TR, enter, enter, and start to work away at the picture. I always find, like, with something like this, when you're trying to figure out what to trim, we'll trim what you know you can get rid of, these big circles. And then it's kind of obvious to trim the corners. <clears throat> And 
And so from here, you know, uh, we've got the general shape. All we need to do is put in these center marks. So the rule of thumb is always to use the largest uh, arc. Okay, so I'm gonna choose the biggest one. And since these two circles are concentric, they share the same center point, it'll end up where we want it. If I can click. And so there, you know, technically uh, it extends the full length of these. So if you want, you can grab the square grip, never touch the triangle grips on these, but grab the square grip and move it to the end of the other one. So I'll just click it and snap it. Same with the other side. And there we have it. <clears throat> so that's number five. And we'll go ahead and open up the next one. And uh, looking at it, number six will be the next one. It's also going to be Imperial. Sorry, making sure I got my settings right there. All right. Um, so it's a pretty basic shape. Draw the part view as shown, you know. So we'll start with... Um, well, we will start with this corner over here. So, you know, everything's kind of based off of this edge and this edge. So um, here seems like a good starting point. We'll just work away our way around. We'll put in the fillet last, um, you know, just make the general outside boundary, put the hole in, put the fillet and call it a day. <coughs> so um, let's go ahead and start in an area about like 12, eight. First thing I'm gonna do uh, I'm just going to draw that long horizontal line in the bottom. I always like to get anything that can immediately give me some context, right? So that way I can start to, in my head, picture what it is I'm doing. And so I'm going to draw that line 0.5 up. And I'm going to stop. And I'm going to come over here to the other side. And I'm going to draw the line that's 1 up. And so then I can do the 1.25 line. Now, uh, pretty simple math, but make this line here it's the difference of these two so 0 0.5 because 1 minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.5 <clears throat> and then I can just hit close well actually I can't hit close I'll just close it by choosing the endpoint and to make the circle in the middle here um, you know there's actually a couple ways so I, I mentioned offset but if you're not a fan of offset yet you can always just draw a line arbitrarily long draw 0 0.5 here and then just make it come all the way through and that gives you the same kind of setup but I'm still a fan of just offset because it's easy you type in O you type in the value and you click right so that tells us it's 0 0.5 this way and then it is 0 0.5 from the bottom to the center so we'll do offset again and that will be the center of our circle uh, it gives us the value in diameter so I'm going to Go ahead and choose the intersection point and it'll be 0.38. Okay, so deleted that. Now we'll do another tan tan radius for the fillet. <clears throat> I don't know. Let's do the fillet command. Let's just give it a shot since you haven't seen it yet. So it says select first object. We'll choose the line, select second object. Nothing. Okay. Well, that was lame. Told y'all I don't use it too much. Well, let's see. Um, so let's choose a radius and let's give it a, okay. So that was a problem. It had a radius value of zero. Uh, so first thing, always choose your radius. We'll do the value of 0.25 and now we'll choose our objects. There we go. Very lovely. Um, so, you know, you can use that too. If you get proficient with it, obviously it can save some time with trimming. But what I've found is sometimes it'll delete um, lines that it corresponds to. So that's why I've always been a little uh, cautious of it, you know. So we'll do our center mark. And just like that, we're actually um, done with this one already. So, um, you know, that's all for this week. But if, if anybody's having any questions on how to draw any of this, just let me know.